Hey guys, welcome back. Nick here. This is MSFS Flight Plans, and I've just got to post this real quick video. I hate to say it, I hate using clickbait catchphrases, but I have found a genuine game changer. I have got a Bravo Throttle Quadrant by Honeycomb, and I have got the old trim wheel on the side of that thing, and if you have any kind of trim wheel that's an external component on your cockpit, your sim pit at home, you're having the same problem, I'm sure. To get this thing to move even like an inch on the in-sim trim wheel, you've got to turn it three or four or five or ten times. It's just way too, way too much movement to get it to move the same amount in the sim. Not that big of a deal if you get used to it, but I am now a student pilot. If you did not know that, if you haven't been following along the last few months, and I'm flying a real 172 several times a week, and when you get in that thing and you're used to spinning this thing ten times, <laughs> it doesn't do the same thing inside of this. If you turned the full revolution inside the cockpit, that thing would nose all the way up or all the way down. So I needed this thing. I wanted my Bravo to feel more like the real thing. And so I was thinking about getting maybe one of the custom made external ones to go on there, but I don't think that would fix the problem. It would look probably more like a real Cessna trim wheel. But the problem that we have with the Bravos and anything else in there is that the trim axis is not associated with an axis like your throttle levers are or anything else that would be associated with an axis like your yoke or anything like that. It's associated with a button, and what that means is when you turn it, it's almost as if it's repeatedly clicking a trim up or trim down button, which is why you're, when you're in the plane, it sounds like a button is clicking. That's what it's doing when you're turning that wheel. So I was like, surely someone at some point has found a fix for this because I'm sure everybody's been bothered by it, and maybe I'm telling you something you already know, but this was news to me. So I searched on YouTube for a way to adjust the sensitivity. That's what I typed in there, how to adjust the sensitivity of the trim wheel on the Bravo throttle quadrant. And good old Mark from Simhanger was the only person that I could find anyway that had said anything about that. And he posted a video about three years ago for a third party company, which I'm sure you heard of, which I'll talk about in just a minute, that has made something that fixes that. And boy, does it ever fix it. It is now perfect, which is absolutely awesome. So I'm gonna tell you about that. And I would just let it go with Mark's video. And again, full credit to him for even notifying me and the rest of us of this, but his video is older. The application has changed and it is not for 2024, it's for 2020 and it works a little bit differently in 2024. So I'm gonna walk you through very quickly how you install the thing, how you get it configured for 2024. And I'm guessing, again, I've got the Bravo, it'll probably work with any other trim wheels if you have some kind of external trim wheel that you're using. But let me talk about what this thing is. And I'm going to link Mark's video to this, which you should probably watch even though it's now out of date and won't work for 2024. It's 15 minutes long or so. It'll just give you an idea of what's going on behind the scenes and it may help you because on the website for the application, it's not entirely thorough. So I'll fill in all the gaps as we go through this. But first, let me show you the application itself. I'm gonna pull it over here and I will put a link for this in here along with Mark's video. Authenticate is the ones who made that. And if that sounds familiar to you, this is the outfit that has been making all of those 3D printed throttles for the classic Warbirds, which is really cool, but I wouldn't be getting one of those, so I haven't used them. But they've also, I think they originally made this to get their hardware to work better, but they probably answered the call for all the people frustrated with these trim wheels. So once you get on here, this is super easy. Just click this button, download the latest release, and here's what it's gonna look like, just in case you're not familiar with these. Just scroll down a little bit, click that one right there. It's gonna be a setup file, so once it downloads, click on it, it'll take you through all the setup stuff. Boom, bam, you're good to go. Let's back up one page. And then it walks you through exactly what you have to do down here. Now in Mark's video, it said install this first, which I didn't do because I just clicked this and didn't think about it. It didn't mess anything up. So if you install that first, not gonna be a problem. But then you've got to install VJoy. And I don't know how all this stuff works under the hood. That is not my forte, but I think this is what's called a, I don't know what these are called, but this is what will actually speak to the SIM and this will make more sense to you in a minute. So this is gonna link what we're gonna be adding to the SIM back and forth. The only thing I will point your attention to here is make sure you click the proper Windows version. So if you're running Windows 10, make sure you click 10. If you're running 11, run that one. Follow the prompts, super straightforward, super easy. It's gonna ask you to restart your computer. And after that, it'll pull up this little thing. And this is what I'm going to walk you through next. And you'll wanna pay attention to this section down here, which I'm going to come back to and reference. So I'm just gonna kind of put that up in the corner over there. And then this is what the application will look like when you open it. So in Mark's video, they had not yet made a preset for the honeycomb and now they have it. So all you'll have to do is go over here to presets, click on that. Once you do it, it's going to pull up something that looks identical to this. In Mark's video, he was saying that you'll have to go through here and save some different settings, multiple, multiple steps. I think they've streamlined all that because I didn't need to do any of that. All I did was load up this preset and then now we're going to go into the sim and then we'll come back to this. So we're already in the sim. Let's go over here. We're going to have to mess with our configurations just a little bit for the controls. 
One thing that you will absolutely want to do, you will have to do, or it's not going to work properly, is go in there and delete whatever is attached to the trim wheel control in your Bravo or whatever else you're using. Because if that is activating at the same time as the new thing, you're going to have problems. So this is just saying, hey, make sure you go in there and just delete whatever is already operating with those things. You may want to set up a new configuration file if you want, if you want to save the other one for some reason. I don't know why you'd want to, because once you do this, you're never going to go back again, I can assure you. So let's just open up our control settings screen here so I can show you what to do over here. Escape key, settings, if you've never done this before, controls, and this is the worst part of 2024 for me still, having to wait for this stuff to pull up. So the first thing you'll notice once you have downloaded the VJoy device is that you now have a new control over here, the VJoy device. So again, make sure you first go into your Bravo, delete the buttons that were associated with your trim wheel so that those will not be activated. And then once you get in here, check the box for VJoy device, and then come up here and just start typing elevator trim. And this is the one you're going to select. Now, if you start, if you hit search for input and start spinning your trim wheel, it's not going to recognize it. It's going to say you've got the wrong device in there. So what you're going to do instead is come over here and click that little button right there, the little gear icon. And I'm going to bring this screen back up over here because it's going to tell us what to do. You will look over to the left side of the screen. This looks very different than it did in 2020. Works differently as well. Over here, it says right here in bold print, select joystick L axis X, not X negative X, which is the first one right over here. Just click that button, slide this over here. And now this did not say anything about the other part of this, which I had to figure out through trial and error. The first thing you'll notice if you hop back in the sim is that it's spinning the wrong way. So set that to inverted axis. And then finally, yours may not do this, but mine did. Go over here and click down in the bottom right, the hardware settings. When I first got in here, this was set way up here. And what was going on is it would all of a sudden speed way up and then slow way down and then start going backwards. I don't know why that was set to default like that, but just bring that back down till you have a completely flat line. And then as you can see here, as I move my trim wheel, it's moving just like it should up and down. Okay, so let's get back in the plane. Resume, I'm just gonna shift C it so we can hop in. Our elevation is almost 5,000 feet here. Let's just uh, check that. Yeah, so we have got the mix pulled out just a little bit so that we can get up in the air. And we'll go ahead and bring up our flaps. Now watch when I turn the trim wheel. So if I grab it at the very bottom at like the 180 degree position, and I'm going to see if this little bump moves all the way to the top when I move it to the 360 degree position upwards. Not really. So it's lagging just a little bit. And when we get in the air, we'll kind of adjust that to taste. And the way that you're going to do that is you will hit stop, first of all, or you won't be able to adjust the sensitivity. Now, when I hit stop, look what happens. The trim wheel is not working. I'm spinning my Bravo. Nothing's going on. So you'll want to make sure, one, you start this when you get into the sim. And maybe even before you get in the sim, I didn't trial and error that. So if it's not working, you may need to start this before you get in the sim. And there will be a desktop icon that will install that you can just click on, open it right up. You have to go ahead and hit start or start all. There'll only be one in here, so you can hit either of these two things. We'll just hit start all. Once you hit start all, now it's working again. So let's get that back down to our takeoff position. And we're going to get up in the air. I'm going to see how it feels versus how the real Cessna feels. And then if we have to, we'll come back over here and adjust this sensitivity. In Mark's video, he set this to 201. He didn't explain why he got to that number. I felt like that was a little bit too slow, but let's just go ahead and hop up in the air and see how this feels. All right, well, let's rock and roll. Brakes are already off. Everything's good. It's going to take a while to get up. We're in some thin air up here. And I hope you guys will check out this next flight. I'm going to showcase a bunch of new apps, tell you some of the things I've learned in flight school that you may find valuable if you're a hardcore simmer. And we're even going to do some live radio calls with one of the applications I've been using. It's not VATSIM, but very similar to it. All right, rotate speed will be at... 55 knots. I'm hoping that left wing doesn't come up, so we'll just go ahead and give it a little bit of left aileron. And we're above 55 knots, so up we go. Okay, so I've learned that in real life, if we keep this thing at about the 7.5 degrees of incline mark, that'll get us up to our best rate of climb, which is about 75 knots, once we get up to full thrust power here. So if I just let go of the yoke, it's going to sink. So I'm going to pull that back a little bit and see how it feels. Pretty dang close. That's real close, actually. So maybe they have tested that out in a Cessna and they know how it's supposed to feel because that's pretty close. So I'm just adjusting that. That's pretty close to how it feels. 
So it may be spot on. So again, if you want to adjust it, just pause the sim for a second, bring this back over here. Remember, you have to hit stop. You won't be able to adjust it. Move that up or down a little bit. And then when you're ready to go again, just hit start all, and then just trial and error it until you get it dialed in just right. And that's it, guys. That is it. I cannot believe more people are not talking about this because if you fly Cessnas in real life, or if you're just frustrated because you're getting carpal tunnel syndrome by twisting that spinning wheel around all the time, this fixes it forever. And it was so super easy and works exactly like you'd want it to work, which is awesome. This is just amazing. <laughs> this is incredible. Oh my gosh. For three years, I've been just tolerating this. Awesome. Maybe four years now. All right, that's it, guys. Be sure to check out that next flight. It's going to be awesome. Can't wait to see you all in the skies later.